So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and welcome to another episode of AI Cafe. This is episode number two. This time I'm currently in Boston at the AI World Conference where I was invited uh, for a discussion uh, at, a, at a luncheon session actually uh, with my mentor, the CTO and VP of IBM Watson, Rob High, uh, who's now joining us for the, very, uh, for the actual second episode of AI Cafe. So welcome Rob. Yeah. yeah. Hi Timmy. How you guys? Great, so now let's begin. Now in today's episode of AI Cafe, we're going to be talking a lot about artificial intelligence, uh, what to expect from AI, but mainly what not to expect from AI. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, hype around artificial intelligence, you know, uh, what it can do, uh, what a lot of people think it can do at least. Right, yeah. uh, but since they're not actually in the back end, you know, on the development side of AI, they don't really have a very clear picture uh, of what exactly AI is capable of. Right. Uh, and how exactly it works. Yeah. Uh, like for example, a few days ago when I came from my attended IBM talk, I had to really clarify the point that just because uh, you know there are these algorithms called, uh, called artificial neural networks, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're an exact replica of biological neural networks. No, I mean our, our own all. human mind is incredibly complicated. Oh, and it's incredibly complicated. And a lot of things about it that we don't even fully understand, let <laughs> exactly. alone trying to recreate them. Exactly. And plus, even apart from the fact that we don't completely understand them, as you say, why would we want to replicate it in the first place? Right? Why would we take the limitations that our human mind has and put the same limitations in technology? Yeah, right. There's no point to it. Right. So instead, I had to really emphasize that artificial neural networks are instead loosely inspired by the way our brains work. Uh, instead, in, instead of being you know exact copies of the algorithms and structure, the structure is just slightly inspired by the way the brain mm -hmm. works, a mm -hmm. network of neurons, a network mm -hmm. of nodes. Uh, but the actual algorithms are entirely entirely different. We have no idea how our brain functions and trains itself. Yeah. All we know uh, is that artificial neural networks use backpropagation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we know what they don't do. But, you know, I do think this is a really important point because, you know, at the end of the day, we as human beings have certain capacities mm -hmm. that make us human. They, exactly. they define, you know, who we are, they define how well we do what we do, but there's also limitations to what we oh, do as yeah. human beings Absolutely. too. And so it's, at some level you got to ask, why would we want to replicate exactly. the human mind, both because, you know, look, we've got a lot of human minds out there already, but also, why would I want to replicate the flaws? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? It'd be so much more powerful if, if what we could do is use these cognitive systems, these AI systems, to pick up from where humans oh, leave off absolutely, and then yeah. bring them together to work together to kind of solve exactly. problems in a way that... You know, by themselves, either one of them works exactly. Really well. Exactly. Really well. And so, what we can do with uh, cognitive computing, uh, as we call it here, um, is we're not only looking at, okay, you know, how can we replicate the human mind? We're taking a look at how can we make humans and technology collaborate in a better exactly. way, right? right? Yeah. How can we make it so humans want to and are, you know, uh, and make it easy for, actually, humans to collaborate with technology? Yeah. Like right now, even doing something really simple, forget like cancer treatment and everything, mm -hmm. even doing things simple, mm -hmm. uh, simple tasks on your phone, mm -hmm. these can be annoying. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're annoying is because, let's say I'm communicating with you, Rob, mm -hmm. okay? or you, the viewer, okay? mm -hmm. and I tell you, uh, as, as we were mentioning before, uh, set an alarm for 6 a.m. for mm -hmm. me. Right? You'll go to the clock, you'll set an alarm. Mm -hmm. That was so natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't need to communicate. I didn't need to click a button on you or anything. Yeah. Well, uh, with, yeah. with your phone, you have to actually go over to the clock. You have to set the alarm. It's such a manual and tedious process. Mm -hmm. But through artificial intelligence systems, mm -hmm. we can create that collaboration. We can bridge that gap between the humans and the technology. And what we can do then uh, is we can say, oh, Siri, set an alarm for 6 a.m., okay. right? And it does that. Yeah. But there's still something lacking. And so Rob, That's would right. you like to sort of expand a little bit more on why, what AI doesn't have? Well, I mean, what, what AI is missing in our current implementations of it is a sense of what I call presence. Yeah. Um, so when you and I are talking, and if you ask me to set the alarm for 6 a.m., the um, you know the, it's not only just the fact that I might be able to go do that for you in oh, that, yeah. that question, but in doing so, I'm also anticipating your need. Mm -hmm. I'm recognizing that hey, if you pause for a moment in the process of asking me to go set an alarm, mm -hmm. there's something meaningful behind that. Exactly. On the flip side of that is that having asked me to go set the alarm for you for mm -hmm. six a.m. You're also getting some feedback from me, right? Exactly. You know, we have eye contact, we have exactly. facial expression, we exactly. have we have arm and hand movements, and all which are reinforcing not only the fact that I understand what you just asked me to do. I can now you can tell from my my facial gestures exactly. that you know that I understood what you just asked for. Yeah. 
But I can also use that to understand a little bit better whether that's something that, is that the only thing exactly. that you're looking for? Is there something else going on? Exactly. And that back and forth is really, really essential it's to human, human communication, exactly. right? Exactly. That's what makes exactly. it natural. But it's also, if we're really going to get these cognitive systems mm. to amplify our own thinking, yeah, exactly, exactly. they're going to have to do something similar. Exactly, exactly. But then again, they have to do something similar. But what a lot of people think is that we're trying to replicate them. Yeah. Not true. The, we're trying yeah. to make it so we can bridge that gap, yet at the same time, yeah. leave enough of gap that the limitations yeah. are left in that gap yeah. Yeah, yeah, like for example yeah. cancer treatment okay one of the you know promising uh, parts of AI is that it can do cancer treatment you know it can do diagnosis so much faster and so much more accurately than a human can mm. but the thing is what a lot of people don't realize is that AI won't be making the decision for the cancer specialists yeah right, that's right. instead what it's going to be doing is it's going to be providing them a lot of information very quickly mm. that they can use to make a more informed a better decision yeah that's right in some cases that may be just simply reinforcing what they oh, already knew absolutely but now given the evidence to now understand exactly. why what they were expecting exactly. and what they were thinking makes sense or in some cases it's going to bring up ideas that they hadn't thought of themselves oh, yeah. right maybe about something that's new out in the market that they're not oh, fully aware exactly, of or they didn't exactly. know exactly how that could be applied to that patient exactly if all we can do is kind of reinforce their own thinking and then extend it with some new ideas, exactly. we're going to make a tremendous difference in the healthcare industry. Completely agree. In fact, I may have actually shared this uh, on another uh, another episode on my YouTube channel. Uh, but as you probably know, you know, you're working with IBM Watson, of course, uh, so you probably are aware of this example. Uh, there was a an IBMer who actually wanted to see if they can create uh, or find new drugs mm -hmm. uh, for Parkinson's with mm -hmm. IBM Watson. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? Mm -hmm. They took IBM Watson's drug discovery service. Mm -hmm. They, you know, fed in all these sorts of uh, data points using the, you know, doctor's help, uh, the specialist's help. Of course, we're not placing them; we're helping mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it did is it went through the entire repository of drugs that it has, mm -hmm. and it says these drugs, which have never even been, been thought before yeah, yeah. by doctors to be yeah. linked to Parkinson's, right. apparently are more effective than current medicine. Well, it's like find the association between the drugs that are out there, the kinds of proteins that they act on, exactly. what that chemical reaction is, and then therefore understand what their correlation might be between exactly. that drug, that protein, and other diseases that have similar exactly. kinds of protein-based effects. Mm -hmm. You know, those are those are opening up a whole new idea exactly. about how these things that we may already know about could be reapplied to new things. Completely agree. In fact, if you think about it, automation is something that's taking over us our lives so quickly. Yeah. Right, we have we have these virtual agents for our phones, right? The the we make cars almost completely automatically at this mm -hmm. point. Our draw, then the cars drive themselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what we haven't completely done yet is imagine you're a doctor, okay, and you're going through you know spending years finding drugs mm -hmm. for diseases. Mm -hmm. That is such an inefficient process. Mm -hmm. It, you, once you actually take a look at what we've done with you know Watson and AI drug discovery, you think why haven't we invented this before? Yeah, right. And that's where the AI comes in. Well, it is, and, and what was interesting about the case that you described is there's a perfect example where inefficiencies exist because we all have our biases. Exactly. Right. We tend to, as if you're in the drug discovery space. We go back to the things that we know, exactly. and we know the things that we know because exactly. we've been reinforced on how well those things have worked for us in the past, exactly. and that creates this sort of tight loop exactly. that in results in bias, and so we only look for answers in the way that we think about the problem, Exactly. whereas most of the opportunity, I think, exists in places where we're not thinking about the questions we're not thinking to ask. Exactly. And if we can exactly. find a system that inspires us, if we can find a system that brings just the right mm -hmm. information to the right moment, right, in the right way, and interacts with us in a exactly. way that causes us to think differently, the result will be that it opens our mind to Absolutely. different possibilities and, you know, Absolutely. being more effective and more efficient. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, in fact, some of the bare bone reasons for why AI is so much better at us is, first of all, again, not trying to replicate the human mind. Mm. So those limitations, like for example, are biased towards simple and repeatable patterns. Yeah. They're removed. Yeah. Like, like for example, if I'm looking at you know the Bitcoin price over the past few years, right, my brain yeah. will tend to go towards simple and repeatable patterns, yeah. and my brain won't see those patterns. Yeah. My brain will think it's just random noise. Yeah. But an AI can find small patterns mm -hmm. um, that aren't necessarily uh, simple. 
Right. It can find patterns uh, that don't repeat themselves very often. It'll yeah. find those very, very small, distinct patterns. Yeah, the patterns uh, of meaning. Exactly. It'll right. find the meaning in such vast, complex data. Yeah. That's why it's so special. Uh, and that's why it's so useful in, for example, as mentioned, drug discovery. Mm-hmm. And you, you, Rob was actually mentioning this during our session later, uh, earlier, this, uh, uh, earlier today. Uh, and that is that, for example, as humans, let's just say we find this drug. Right. We might think, oh, wait, we just stumbled upon the drug. This is our first answer. This is something that we might want to go towards. Mm-hmm. This is something that we want to continue researching. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the thing that AI does is it says it won't just stop at the first answer. Yeah. It'll continue looking through all the answers yeah. and say, yeah. this, yeah. Yeah. these are the drugs that you need to test. Yeah. It'll say, these drugs definitely won't work. Mm-hmm. Filter mm-hmm. them out. Mm-hmm. Look at these ones. Test mm-hmm. these ones. That's right. And then the doctors go ahead That's and right. test them. Yeah. Uh, and f- similarly with question answering systems. Yeah. Or decision systems. Exactly. Any decision kind of system, decision systems, any right? sort of decision system is not stopping at the first answer. It's looking through everything, seeing where could the yeah, correct answer be. Yeah, what would really be the, the best of all the alternatives exactly. that we've got to bring to your attention. Exactly. Um, and that's right. I mean, it, and the point that we were making earlier is that oftentimes in any kind of business in the situation, we're a little bit motivated mm-hmm. just to find the first best answer. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Not the best answer, but the first one that we find that's yeah. good enough that yeah. fits the problem. Exactly. Because if it works, then we're going to use it and yeah. move on to the next issue exactly. and our day is spent almost you know oh, in yeah. and out going yeah. through this series of decisions mm-hmm. like that completely the result being of course this is what drives us into holes into oh, yeah. dark alleys yeah. into things that we can't get out of um, just because we didn't consider what the alternatives were and of course you know there's a time essence to all this as well oh, yeah. we got to find these answers Really Without cool. it being something that's yeah. going to drag on for if days or weeks. you have like 10 weeks. issues, you can't spend the entire month on just one. No, that's right. right? That's you, have right. To, you have to do it quickly, but at the yeah. same time, it needs to be effective. Yeah. There's the quantity, but it also has to be you know, high yeah. quality. Yeah, that's right. right? And that's the what AI helps habit. us do. That's it right. helps us find the best decisions in mm-hmm. the fastest way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it allows us to do our jobs so much more efficiently. That's right. That's right. And again, it's not about it making the decisions for us. Exactly. It's about it inspiring us to make better decisions. Exactly. Exactly. So there's a lot to be that to be said about that, but I also think there's some things that are missing. And, yes, and of we course. shouldn't be presuming that AI can do everything <laughs> that humans can do. It's very easy for us as human beings to imagine yeah. that just because it can solve this problem, which is very similar to the problem that I'm familiar with being able to solve, means that it necessarily I'll be able to answer every other kind of question out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not. It's not about solving the broad range of things that human beings are able to think of, mm-hmm. but we also shouldn't presume that that's our goal either. No, yeah. It's not, we're yeah. not driving to go create, uh, yeah. a, you know, as you said, a replica of the human mind, exactly. what we exactly. otherwise refer to as general AI. Yeah. There are places where we can apply the technique exactly. of artificially reasoning about a problem mm-hmm. that by itself doesn't necessarily replicate the human, but yet still causes us yeah. to think yeah, about things differently. And don't presume that we understand the human mind well enough to be able to assume that later on we could ever get to the point of creating a fully replicated human mind in these artificial intelligence systems. Exactly. And as we said earlier, that's not even the point anyway, because doing so would only mean that we're replicating the same flaws that humans have. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, you know, there is an opportunity and there's an economic incentive to build yeah. a system that will augment our intelligence. Absolutely. To absolutely. extend, you know, sort of strengthen our own cognitive capabilities mm-hmm. and extend our intelligence, uh, our reach, right, mm-hmm. our cognitive reach, um, which makes it very similar mm-hmm. to almost every other tool yes. that we have ever experienced that has had lasting value. Oh, if you yeah. think about the history of all the tools that have ever been created, yeah. the one thing that you'll find consistent across all those tools mm-hmm. is they've had the effect of either increasing our strength mm-hmm. or extending our reach, yeah. right? Whether those are hydraulics or pneumatics or pulleys and levers yeah. or hammers or I mean, all of these kinds of tools that we can think of. Yeah have had that same characteristic. Absolutely, absolutely. And like, for example, now, if we were to use artificial intelligence, right, if we were to use what AI is good at, for uh, for example, pattern detection, right? yeah. if we were to use it in fields like, say, self-driving cars, yeah. that's extending our reach. It's extending mm-hmm. what we can do mm-hmm. as humans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, for example, as a cancer specialist, you don't need to spend as much time necessarily mm-hmm. finding the correct information mm-hmm. then diagnosing the patient and working on the treatment. That's right. All you need to do is use the AI, find the right resources, mm-hmm. and from there, 
Yeah, you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, now you're making better and decisions. And it makes better decisions and faster decisions yeah, as well. Yeah, that's exactly. really cool. Without sacrificing on accuracy, in fact, increasing it. Yeah, and, we, and this becomes a little bit more obvious when we're talking about something like oncology and the benefits that that would bring to the healthcare professions. Mm-hmm. But think about it in our everyday lives. Oh, you know, how many decisions we make absolutely. every single day? And we don't you know, even realize at home it. or in the office yeah. or you know in in you know going to the, going to the doctor or, yeah. or driving our cars. How many of those decisions that, as he said, we don't exactly. think about, but yeah. yet if we had the benefits of a cognitive system sort of challenging us to think about the problem a little differently would change the way that we come to these conclusions exactly. Exactly. and the efficiencies of our day. Exactly. All right, so that concludes AI Cafe episode number two. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. Thank you very much for joining Rob. Thank you, Jamie, as always. <laughs> Of course, thank you. I hope to do another video with you very soon. In fact, if you haven't already watched the previous video I did with Rob, uh, please do check that out. There will be a link down in the description below. Uh, apart from that, though, if you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to leave a like down below. Uh, apart from that, if you have any more questions, suggestions, uh, or feedback, you can e- leave it down in the comment section below. Email it to me at tajimani at gmail.com. Tweet it to me at tajimani. And Rob, hi, where can the viewers contact you? At R. Hi on, tweet, on Twitter and uh, as uh, Robert High on LinkedIn. Great. Apart from that, though, if you really do, uh, you know, enjoy this content and want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well, as that really does help out a lot. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.